Hi, Gay Duruso here with the Majestic Rider. So today I want to talk to you about gated horses and vet exams. It seems there's lots of confusion surrounding the gated horse when you're doing pre-purchase exam or when you're just having the vet come out to take a look at it and doing like a lameness exam. The problem is some of these horses trot, which make it actually very easy for the vet. And some of these horses do not trot at all. They just either pace or gait, or they're doing five different things. And it confuses the vet and it's confusing the owner. So I put this video together to hopefully help you see what the horses look like when they're gating or pacing and then what they look like when they're trotting. I try to teach most of the horses to trot when they're loose, uh, just because that helps the vet. And a lot of people will get very confused about that and say, oh, you shouldn't teach them to trot. It's gonna ruin their gait and all this. A lot of the gated horses trot when they're loose. So it's perfectly fine to have those horses trot on the lunge line so the vet can see them. Now, some of the other horses, they just gait and they don't trot at all. But again, if you teach them with a purpose, you just have them trot on that lunge line, it's not gonna ruin their gait. Don't let them trot under saddle. They're still going to gate when they're loose, but you give them um, a signal for them to trot and it'll help your vet a lot. And it's going to help you if you have a lameness issue, because it's much easier to figure out where they're lame when the horse is trotting versus gating. When I look at a gated horse and I'm trying to look at its movement or see if it's lame or has an issue, if the horse just gates and that's all you can do, you can't um, lunge it or can't do anything to make it trot. You're looking for evenness of stride. Like, does it step up with the back left hind as far as it steps up with the right back hind? And the same thing with the front. Is it reaching out as far with the left front as it reaches out with the um, right front? So you're trying to make sure that a horse is moving even. The problem with these horses, a lot of times as you're trying to take a look at them, they keep changing their gait. So they might be pacing one minute, then they're trotting, then they're gating, then they're cantering, then they're half cantering, which really makes them look like they're lame because they do this little step, but they're cantering in the front and gating in the back and it makes them look totally lame. The horses do lots of different things and they do it like that, it's quick. One second they're doing something and one second they're doing something else. And then your vet sees it and goes, there's the head nod, it's not in its head. You know, and that's a sign of lameness in a regular horse, but in a gated horse, it's not. You should not focus on that head nod because some of them nod their heads when they gate and it's in that movement and they're supposed to, but that can trick a lot of people. So when you're looking at lameness in the gated horse and they're gating or they're pacing or they're doing lots of weird things, don't focus on the head nod. If you can get them to trot, then you can focus on the head nod and it will help you, but not when they're gating and doing all those other things. Other thing when you're um, running them around is if once in a while they take a step that looks lame to you, that's usually that they're switching in between gates or they're cantering and they're cantering on the wrong lead behind or they're cantering on the wrong lead in front or they're gating and cantering at the same time. So if it's just one step or here and there, don't get so paranoid about it. It's usually just them switching their gates. But if they are lame, you should see it a lot more often and consistently. The things that I see a lot in the gated horses when you're looking for lameness is they can have neck problems. A lot of them are ridden so um, inverted with their heads up that they end up getting arthritis in their neck or in their spine. And so um, if the horse is having a problem with tripping or you think it's lame and it keeps doing funny things in the front, make sure you check its neck besides uh, checking for EPM or wobblers and other diseases. If it's losing its hind end, then you want to check its spine and make sure you know it's not having an issue with like kissing spine and um these are things you talk to your vet about so i'm not going to explain what those things are in this video maybe another time but they can have um, problems with their back end with their spine they can also have a stifle problem so the horse's back end keeps giving out that can be a sign of weakness uh, the, around the muscles of their stifles or that their stifles are locking up and they're dragging a hind limb. That can also happen, but it might not happen when you're trying to show the vet. So you wanna be in detail about what that horse is doing or what you're worried about. So neck problems, back problems, stifle problems, they can also have problems with their hocks, uh, especially depending where they were ridden, how hard they were ridden. A lot of the horses now, they're trying to make them into like cow horses, especially the fox trotters. So they're making them do that cow work and rocking them back on their hocks 
well, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to get arthritis in their hocks, just like the quarter horses get arthritis in their hocks. So that's something you'd want to be aware of. Um, gated horses can also have ligament problems. I've talked about that before. It can happen in any of the breeds. Um, it will happen more the, you know, the lower you see them come down in those pasterns, the more they're going to be at risk for that. But you can work that up. It doesn't mean you have to pass on a horse because it comes down low. You talk to your vet about it and then you might want to ultrasound it to see if it has a disease in its ligaments. And if this is going to be a problem down the road, it's always best to be aware ahead of time. Doesn't mean you can't buy the horse, even if it does have an issue. You just want to be aware of what's going to go into taking care of that horse in the future. But some of them, they come down far in their ligaments and that's what makes them so smooth. And that's why people love them. And that's why they're bred to come down in those uh, ligaments further is because of that, okay? But it happens in all the breeds. Cause when I mention one breed, then somebody gets annoyed. Um, but so it can happen in all of them, just so you know, but can happen in some more than the others. Um, other problems you can see with these horses and they're switching around from their different gates is that nobody's taught them to lunge so they don't know what to do on the lunge line they don't know words like when you're uh, when I rode in English we taught them all walk trot canter so the horses knew when to walk trot and canter because we would say the word and then reinforce it on the lunge line a lot of these horses don't so when they walk you can say walk when they trot you can say trot when they gate you can say gate and teach them those words so then it might help you when the vet is there uh, the neurologic issues i've talked to on other videos again. and again some of these things that we see in these horses that um, a lot of vets consider neurologic whoops are bred into these horses they're bred to have looseness they're bred to be lanky they're bred to swing underneath themselves um, some of them, which I've talked about before, have those ringing hocks where their hocks kind of go out like that. That becomes a lot less as the horses get stronger and worked more. And even though it looks very odd and we all think it's odd, I've ridden some of those horses and they were less trippy and actually sure-footed compared to some of the other ones. And people have owned them, the ones with those ringing hocks, many of them have said they didn't have any lameness problems all their life, you know, compared to the ones that were straight-legged. So. Some of these things are bred into the horses for reasons. It makes them a smoother gait, but it also makes them look very weird. And it makes them look really weird to other people at your barn when you're the only one who has a gated horse. So the more lanky they are, the more likely they are to move those hocks around more and swing those legs way underneath them. The shorter they are behind, they're not gonna swing underneath them and they're not gonna do as many funny things with those hocks but they might be a little bit more prone if they're uh, short strided or to get arthritis in their hocks or their fetlocks. So any horses can get arthritis anywhere, but some of it just depends on what, how we've bred them, how we've trained them and the terrain we ride them on. Because we ride them on trail and uh, many of those are hard surfaces, they can be more prone to ring bone and they can get side bone and many other things that can happen. So. When you're looking at these horses, if you're unsure, try to talk to somebody who knows gated horses well, uh, maybe a vet who has seen a fair amount of them so they can tell you what's normal, what's not. You can show them my videos. Hopefully that will help them and um, they'll learn something from it. Um, if not, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And we have many people that say our horses are very weird and odd and I'm okay with that because I'm a little weird and odd myself and I like to be different, so I would like to have a different horse. But it gets you lots of attention, and I can tell you when I speed by on one of these horses, they're not looking at me so much as, oh my God, my, that horse is weird. They're like, what is that, and how do I get one of those? Then they start changing their opinions on them. So be a little bit brave, educate yourself, educate the people around you. If they won't listen to you, that's okay. You believe what they want, but you want to stay educated. Don't let those people convince you that your horse is lame or neurologic when you don't believe it is and all the gated people around you are telling you that your horse is normal, okay? And then also know that the people with gated breeds, this also gets a little confusing. The ones that have the gated breeds and those horses trot, they don't see any need for a uh, you know, a lameness specialist who understands gated horses because their horse trots, so it's not a problem for them. But the people whose horses don't trot and they can't get it to trot, a gated horse specialist does make a big difference. So a vet who has seen a fair amount of them 
makes a huge difference. And I always ask them when they're either vet checking the horses or um, doing lameness exams is how many gated horses have you evaluated? How many um, different breeds of gated horses have you seen? Because it makes a big difference when they're talking to you about these things and telling your horse is lame or it has EPM, but they haven't done any of the tests for it. And you go, well, how many um, gated horses have you seen? They go, oh, a fair amount. And I go, well, what breeds were those? Oh, they were all different breeds. You keep questioning them. And I go, how many of those were walking horses? Because those are the ones they always think are neurologic. And they're like, I don't know, maybe one, one. So the rest of the ones you saw were probably either Rockies or Fox Trotters, and they were probably trotting. They don't have this big lankiness. And so you really haven't seen that many lanky, weird looking walking horses, have you? Well, no. So how can you tell me what's normal and abnormal for a walking horse if you really haven't seen many of them? So the same thing with the other breeds, they can still have problems too. So if you have someone evaluating your Rocky and you think it has a problem with its back end, well, there's things to know about Rockies. They can have stifle problems too. They can also have hock problems. They can get kissing lesions in their back. But if you don't know anything about the breed, you wouldn't know that. And your vet might not know that as well. But someone who's familiar with rock, Rockies and has had them a long time will know some of those things. So it's best to ask those things, okay? So I hope this video helps some of you. I hope this makes you feel like you're not alone anymore. And many of us have been told our horses are lame. And I want to show you how to show them your horse is not lame. And then when they see them trot, how big a difference it can make on their evaluation. So you can see this horse looks totally fine. He's trotting, huge trot. But if he goes to pacing, he looks like he's lame. And that's why people get confused with lameness in gated horses, because if they're on the PC side and you don't see this, you think something's wrong with them because their head's bobbing and they're moving so weird. Now watch. The fact that I want him to pace, he won't. But he paces a lot on the lunge line and your horse probably paces on the lunge line too. So. If you can get them free, sometimes they'll trot, or if you put them over poles, then sometimes they'll trot too. And also if they're running around, they're half cantering and half gating or gating. Um, and then they put a canter step in here or there, or they're cantering on the wrong lead, they'll look like something's wrong with them too. But these are gated horses and you need to know your own gated horse so you can help your vet. Okay, now he goes to pacing. See how that back end looks so weird? Just because he's pacing and then he's elevating his back. Same horse, two minutes later. Okay, I'm gonna go the other way. Same horse. He's actually step pacing, but see how it still looks really weird. But you'll see there's no head bob. They just look like he's short striding. And this is why people can't tell. And sometimes they're fine at the trot and then they're a little short strided behind when they're gating because maybe their stifle's sore or they need a little rehab. It's weak. If the regular horses don't have to gate and pass that criteria, then neither should the gated ones, right? If they're sound at the trot, they're sound. Other stuff is just things you got to work on. And it's okay if they pace, because that's naturally in them. That's how they get their gait, so. Okay, but people would think that looks weird because they're going kind of up and down, but it's not like a true head bob. Oh, you're done. Thank you for your demonstration. It'll catch some of this. 
Um, so I have Taylor here. Taylor tends to um, pace when he's on the lunge line. And I put some poles over there so you can see him switch to a trot because this um, might help you to get your horse to switch if the vet's looking at it. Hopefully that's somewhat level. Okay, so hopefully you can see him. So let's go to the right first. I'm not gonna go over the poles first. I'm just gonna speed up. So he's just pacing and step pacing. The lateral gait means the legs are on the same side are moving together, right? So it would make him look like he's laying. Next time I'm gonna take him through the pole. And he has a beautiful trot, and you can see he's totally fine. Okay, so hopefully some of that came out. So if you have one that trots most of the time and they move like this, well, and they're not screwing around, see them float? You're like, I have no idea why you're talking about lameness with gated horses and why they look funny because you have one that trots so you don't know what we're talking about because you don't have one that paces. So lots of people don't understand that. They think all gated horses are the same. They're not. Some pace more, some trot more, some gait more, some cross canter more. See, he's cross cantering. He's on the wrong lead behind. But this horse can also pace and that makes him more lateral while he's eating the tree. And so a lot of them will cross canter, but then they get better and learn what to do. But see, with a beautiful trot like that, we think the best of us are nuts when we're saying our vet doesn't understand our horse when it moves. But when they vet, um, when they pace, it looks very weird. So especially if your horse has lots of gates he can do and he keeps doing them while the vet's trying to figure it out, it makes it very hard. So. That's why if you can set them loose and let the vet watch, a lot of these horses will trot if they can trot. There he just went to pacing. So see, it might look weird for you. And they might take a weird step here or there as they're changing from a pace to a trot or, you know, a trot to a gate, from a gate to a pace. If they take one weird step and you're like, that's it. Well, that's usually not a lameness. That's just them switching 
and it looks weird when they do it but that doesn't mean your horse is lame it just means it's gated and it's doing one of its weird gated things okay i did a thing on this at the expo but the, the phone didn't videotape so i'm trying to do this with what i got here But see how he just did some weird wacky stuff right there? That's just because he was switching from, um, you know, cantering to then kind of pacing and then throwing his legs all over. Now he's back to trotting and looks normal. So he was pacing, then he went to trotting. So let's try it again. We'll get him to canter. Now he's pacing, so it's going to look really weird. Canner. There we go. And see, so after he canters, he usually gets pacey, then he switches to a trot. Now he's trotting. All right, now I'm going to try to make him walk and then walk faster which he'll gate a little bit which is more lateral with him and you'll see him switch to the trot so he's gating because in that little hop step when they switch sometimes people think that's abnormal but it's not it's just him switching from diagonal to um lateral so let's go the other way first so we'll see what he does this way He's trotting. Now I'm going to let him walk because he gets a little bit more lateral when he walks. I'm going to make him walk faster so he might gait. And he switched over and he trotted. So again, those few steps where they're switching is what confuses a lot of people. So this is a Peruvian Paso, and uh, she can trot. So again, this is one that would probably be easy for the vets because she can trot. Sometimes the horse is doing one thing in one direction and something the other direction, but she's trotting both ways. Uh, Peruvian people I've talked to like the way she comes down they said it's not too much it's normal for Peruvians so each breed is a little different how far they come down and of course with these guys you worry about the degenerative ligament disease right but you can ultrasound their tendons to check which is always a good idea She also trots on the lunge line if you go too fast, otherwise she gates.
Okay, here we have another one. This one also paces. So there he's gating. We'll see if they'll trot in here at all. You got a little trot, just for a second. See, that's why it's hard for the vets to tell. Of course, you can tell he's cantering, but he's lateral, so even that canter might look funny to some people. <clears throat> so sometimes they'll break out of the canter to the trot, or they'll trot before the canter. There, he just got a little. There he just got a little trot, but it wasn't very much because it <clears throat> a little bit more trot, so he's hitting it in that corner for some reason. And sometimes they won't switch from lateral to diagonal or diagonal to lateral until they're um, tired. He's cross cantering, so that's normal for a lateral horse. Still cross cantering, so on the wrong leap behind. So same horse. Let's see what he does as he goes faster. So nice gait. Then he should go to pacing. There he goes. So again, he'll look lame. So he's half cantering. Now he's pacing. So he's pace cantering. There he's pacing. Now he's back to walking, so now we'll go the other way. So you'll see he's pacing. Now he's kind of cantering and pacing. Now he's cantering on the wrong lead. Now he's really pacing. Now he's cantering and a little pace. But see, this is why they look weird. So you're trying to... Are they gating the same on each side? Are they stepping up the same? Hind legs stepping up the same. And then if, again, if you can get them to trot at all when they're loose, or over poles, it can help you if you can't figure it out. If you got a pacey horse, teaching it to trot is only gonna help its gait. Now, a lot of people think, you know, that pace was their gait. They're step pacing, they're like, that's their gait. And I hear a lot of vets say that, and I go, no, this is their gait. Slow, but this is what it's supposed to be. That's supposed to be his gait. Just faster, but they're not there yet. But a lot of people are like, he's walking. I was like, yeah, it's called a walking horse. That's what it is. It's a fast walk. There you see he's cross cantering. So what would that make you think right away that he's lateral?
Now there were Betty's on the PC side. This horse will trot, but not on the lunge line. He usually trots when he's loose. And only if he's very excited. So still cross cantering so on the wrong lead behind. Now he's gating. He's kind of step pacing. Now he's cross cantering. Now you might think that someone's going to look at this video and say, they're all lame. What is she talking about? Really? I have all these horses in training and they're all lame? Doesn't happen. <laughs> they're just all weird. They're all pacing horses. There he's gating again. Maybe sometimes they'll trot one direction and not the other when you got them out there. Yep, so he went to gating and then to cantering. So he might have looked weird, like he took a weird step. Now he switched to the other lead. Now he's kind of high step pacing. Again. So he's not trotting in here, but this is in a huge area and he has a big stride. He really trots when it's a big arena. Again, sometimes if they're doing this, keep going. He's like up yours, lady. Um, and you put a pole down, then they'll either, you know, canter and then trot after the pole or trot over it. See. So see how easily they can canter around the wrong lead behind? And then he just swapped. So again, in some regular horses that would mean a lameness problem or it could mean a stifle problem. But in a horse that's pacey, it just means he's pacey, usually. It's not guaranteed. But again, this is gonna be his gait, just faster. That's not what we want as his um, gate. That, of course, would be his canner. So now here's him on the lunge line. There he's pacing. He's Now he's half cantering and pacing. So that's more towards his gate. See how slow it is? Now he's pacing. Now he's half cantering and pacing, so it'll look like he's doing a skipping step, which makes everybody think they're lame, but it's not. We'll try to slow him down, so he's just pacing. See his head shake? That's going more towards his gait, so now we'll go the other way. Okay, so now he's half cantering. Doing the lateral and they try to canter it's hard for them so they can do some weird stuff this looks like a better canter sorry the camera looks tilted for some reason now i'll try to slow him down so now he's just pacing and looking at me but see it'll look like a hop step in there every once in a while that's just the way he's moving but you'll see he doesn't trot on here and that's what confuses people so you're looking for evenness of the steps how far he's reaching up one, one high leg versus the other. How far he's reaching forward with one front leg versus the other. And then what they do with those legs is they go faster. They're reaching up or not. Because sometimes they'll take short steps. Sometimes they'll take that big huge step. It doesn't mean they're lame. It just means they can do a million things. Their legs, which confuses everybody. See, there he would look lame, but he's not. He was half cantering again.